Hello everyone, it's Akatrius here and I welcome you to this new video. Last Thursday, the link format has finally arrived with the TCG and yesterday I have I have had the chance to play links at my locals with Crystrons. So I took up this chance, although I couldn't stand uh, stand until the end, and played three rounds with my Crystron deck and just threw in a decode talker. And well, here's here's a build. Also, this is like the reason why. I am not making any real life videos, I don't have a camera, I am working with a really old um, ha mobile phone camera, so bear with me. This is the build I have used, it's just my really normal build with Black Rose Dragon being replaced with Deco Talker. So nothing too special, nothing too fancy, it's just a very very normal build that you should have already know by now. And as I said, I had the chance to play it yesterday on the locals, and my general experience was pretty good actually. Because, well, as I might have, uh, as I have said earlier in earlier videos, my expectations for link format with crystals was that crystals are not going to be affected by the link format so much that they're not that they're getting unplayable or anything. So I. I always thought that Crystrons would be well playable in the link format, no problems, just play them and have fun. And after playing them for three, for three rounds, I might I must say, I was right. I was so right, and you don't even know how right I was actually, because after some playing around and thinking more, because now this uh, this place I like. Crystrons always required a lot of thinking. That's always that has always been a given because of how you have to manage your disruptions, so you have to manage your summonings and stuff. And now with links, that has even increased because you now need to know if you can actually summon a monster from an extra deck, even if you have the materials, because you have one extra deck zone. And it's getting a bit more complicated in design that you have to like think about more ways or like um, think about it harder when to make something and what what to make in certain situations because you only have the one zone unless you have a link monster or your opponent has a link marker team towards you. So this really is something that makes that gives us a bit more depth into our playstyle. But all in all I do not feel like Link Format has slowed down this deck or has like damaged us in uh, in any way because well we only need one extra monster zone at a time most of the time and we can well play without just spamming all synchro monsters on our faces and well I can show you a picture and I took that, that picture yesterday after a duel uh, after one match against um, a Dino Subterra player and it was a pretty cool match actually he, he was able to uh, to keep up very well and it was a really fun match, but this is what the field looked like at the end of the game. Like, I had this Yuki Usagi on my hand, I had a C-Tree on the field, that was a little mistake there, I shouldn't have summoned the C-Tree. But I have the white R.O.L. in the extra monster zone, a Quarian Gundrex summoned by Magnet Reverse in my grave, uh, uh, on my main monster zone, and a Psy Fremd Omega in my main monster zone. If you didn't know that uh, yet, if uh, Omega gets banished by its own effect and returns, it's going to the main monster zone. And any card that does not come from the extra deck also goes into the main monster zone. So basically, I have three synchro monsters that can potentially sit in the main monster zone right now. Because White Aura Well, when he is destroyed by, your, by the opponent, at, by any means really, it just has to be by the opponent, it, it, it can banish a water monster from a graveyard and summon itself back into the main monster zone. So I could have potential I could potentially have four synchro monsters with these three I have because of magnet reverse and stuff. Cards like magnet reverse gets get way better in link format, especially for crystals because magnet reverse is a quick spell and you can just extend your plays with it. So it has no more meaning because you can either extend your plays make some more combos and stuff, go for stuff like Stardust Warrior more easily in the opponent's turn, even with Link, um, link Zones being a thing. And that makes everything a bit easier, but now you can also just use it to, uh, to get back your beaters into the main monster zone, or just have them there, 
so you can have more synchros out and play with them. It also makes it way easier to go for extra synchros with um, Insectron, Amatrix and Quan uh, Quandex. These three cards are machines and can be summoned with Magnet Reverse if they are the Graveyard or Banished. Which is very very good for this deck and makes Magnet Reverse so viable in this deck as well. Like, Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench was never a bad card in this deck, but the problem is that it was a bit slower than Magnet Reverse and you have to destroy it in order to do something. So you had to waste your either a non-tuner destruction and have the restriction onto you for the rest of the uh, turn, or you have to use your uh, your South Fafnir and then pop your South Fafnir with another non-tuner and then fall under that restriction. And because the second thing is not really viable in link format anymore, because you only have one extra monster zone and not that many ways to go into links, especially if you're under Crystron restriction where you can only summon machine synchros, which of course prevents you from summoning any link monsters. This can get a bit harder, but all in all, it is very possible to play without link monsters and to play with just the one extra monster zone. I only have that uh, the Cold Hawker in there to have one if I need one, like if I need to go for something bigger. But all in all, I did not feel like I have to make it. I summoned it once yesterday just for the sake of summoning it, to be honest. It was a bad, bad decision and I lost that duel, but I just wanted to summon it. Like, we don't really need to summon it. And Deco Talker being like a bit meh right now for us because we need free um, effect monsters. Uh, we don't really go into that so much. Like, we don't really throw in free effect monsters so easily. And yeah, that, that hinders us a bit. But having the option to go for this kind of fields, even though we only have one extra monster zone, this is something that might be more interesting, uh, more worth looking into because, well, Crystrons can still do this. They can do this without any like um, modifications. Like my old build, I could have just used my old build and rolled with it in this t tournament. I would not. I did not really need to throw in that decode talker. And I mean, looking at at the coming uh, at the upcoming sets. I don't really think, like, we won't have any Link Monster in Code of the Duelist, although we will get two interesting cards in Code of the Duelist, one being Pulse Mines. Pulse Mines is a pretty interesting card, to be honest, which I closed. Oh, let me get it back on, actually. Pulse Mines is a pretty interesting card because it uh, makes it so you cannot be... Um, yeah, so you cannot be... OTK that easily, except if you're playing against a Link deck because they cannot be changed into defense position. Like Pulse Mines is still like a good side card against decks that don't necessarily go for the um, go for Link monsters so much, or if you can just disrupt their Link monsters, which is pretty easy as well. So like Pulse Mines is one good card from from the next set. And we have Free Strike Barrier. This card is. Risky as hell. Like I don't know. I just looked it up and I just looked through the Code of a Duelist set list. Like I just wanted to see the cards, like um, just see what they could possibly do. And I can see Free Strikes Barrier being like a double-edged sword, but pretty much working. Like if your opponent controls exactly three cards, it's kind of steep. But like in timeout situations, situations where I won with in Powered Insectron alone, because it gave me one full turn or just t took the opponent's last chance to get some damage in. This can provide the same thing and Crystal is able to um, control the cards the opponent has, like the amount of cards you can decide how many cards your opponent contr can control with stuff like Warrior and Gundrex. If your opponent uh, sets everything and stuff, well, this is getting a little bit harder but you can use Free Strikes Barrier against certain decks and it can be potentially pretty nice. And it can like, it has free effects which is nice, like either you protect your monsters, you get no battle damage, and well, or you use it in your turn and even higher the LP difference you, can, uh, you have, which can be pretty nice, like all the free effects are very good in Crystrons, just the condition is a bit meh. And that's basically all for 
in Code of the Duelist really, because we don't get really much more out of it. The Link Monsters in Code of the Duelist are subpar for Crystrons. Like, they are awesome. There are awesome Link Monsters in Code of the Duelist. And I have to put my hands down on it. They are. They just are. Like, Ninjirsu, Firewall, Dragon, and Mrs. Radiant are two, uh, are three really good Link Monsters. We just don't need them. We just cannot really use them. I really recommend you getting those though. For Circuit Break, that's a whole another story. First up, we'll get Metaverse. Metaverse is a godlike car for Crystrons. It, it, I will make another video about it soon, so I don't want to spoil it too much now, but basically you can put more pressure without actually pressuring the opponent, ca catching them a bit more off guard with your combos and just have more um, impact without the opponent knowing you can have this, uh, this impact. This is something worth uh, looking into, like this will most likely be a common or rare when it comes out at circuit break and if you're a crystal player, pick up one, two or three of those. I will, I will pick up three of those. I personally run two right now but I haven't playtested it yet because I wanted to wait for a complete link Percy which is why I'm on a hiatus right now but Metaverse is a really good card. And then we have Mustard Boy and that's up though, that's so up though to be honest, because it's the link to water thing, and you can summon it with the Crystron token by Rosenix, and this makes things so much easier and stronger, you have more ways to beat over your opponent and stuff, like Master Boy will make this deck way, way better, and you'll have way more fun with um, making links and such. Like Master Boy is a way better deco talker for this deck because it provides the same link markers to you, doesn't have a nice uh, targeting uh, negation effect, but it has so much more to offer. It can recycle your extract monsters, it can gain you like a bit more ATK, and it is easy to summon. So what more do you want really? Master Boy is what you need. So with all that being said, and taking care of these things, yeah. This has been my first thoughts about Link Format after playing it in real life and about the two upcoming sets with the cards we know from the OCG. And I just wanted to talk about that in this video today because I was on a hiatus and I wanted to wait for links to hit, either real life or Percy. Maybe one day I will have a camera and be able to record real life stuff so you can see more interaction and I can make it more interesting for you to watch rather than just to listen. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this has been Actrius and stay Ravened.